Richard Stockton escaped death from an aggressive robber, a shipwreck, taken prisoner by a mob, dragged from his bed, placed in a common prison where he was starved, beaten, and nearly frozen to death. Richard Stockton. Richard Stockton. Richard Stockton. Richard Stockton was born on October 1st, 1730, near Princeton, New Jersey. Richard was named after his great-grandfather who came to America in 1670. Richard received a very good education early in his life, graduating with honors from West Nottingham Academy in 1748. Richard devoted himself to the study of law and was admitted to the New Jersey Bar at the age of 24. He soon built a good reputation, both as a counselor and as an advocate. He was known for his easy and eloquent way of speaking. In about 1757, Richard married the love of his life, Annis Burino, who was a poet and the first colonial woman to have her work published. Well, our pair of eloquent scholars went on to have six children, four daughters, two sons. Interesting, their daughter Julia Stockton went on to marry fellow signer Benjamin Rush. In 1766 and 67, Richard left his professional business to go visit England, Scotland, and Ireland. During his tour there, he found that his professional reputation had preceded him, and he was even invited to participate in court by a minister of the king where he discussed American affairs with many distinguished people from across the pond. While he was visiting in Edinburgh, he was invited to a public dinner by the authorities for his impressive character. His trip there, however, wasn't all fun and games. While he was in Edinburgh, Richard was stopped one night by an aggressive robber. Richard defended himself with a dagger and even wounded his surprised attacker, preventing any loss of property, but the robber got away. Later during the same trip, Richard was planning to cross the Irish Channel and had purchased a ticket to do so. Richard waited, and he waited, for his luggage to arrive from the previous leg of his trip, but his luggage didn't show up on time, and the ship he was meant to board had already left. But this ended up saving Richard's life since that very ship got shipwrecked during a storm sending everyone on board to a watery grave. In 1768, Richard was appointed to a seat in the New Jersey Provincial Council. He was respected by his superiors in the royal government and had a perfect home life, plenty of money. He was surrounded by the family that he greatly loved and he held a prestigious position in the most powerful government in the world. But eventually the question arose whether he should or whether he should not continue his allegiance to the king. He happily sacrificed his secure future and separated himself from the royal council. Richard was elected to represent New Jersey in the 1776 Continental Congress and was very active in the discussions there but he had some doubts about rushing into independence. After hearing the powerful and the impressive speeches from John Adams, his doubts were then gone. Richard was not only convinced of the importance of independence, but addressed the House himself before the close of the debate as a proponent for independence. Richard was able to sign the Declaration of Independence on the 4th of July, 1776, at the age of 45. On November 30th, Richard was taken prisoner by a mob of loyalists, dragged from his bed and forced to march to New York to be placed in a common prison where he was starved, beaten, and nearly frozen to death. Congress told General Washington and he sent General Howe to go solve the situation. Richard was eventually released, but his health was never to be the same, despite having Benjamin Rush as his son-in-law closely caring for him. Richard's money, his home and lands, they were ruined. His papers and his library burnt, animals driven away, and he was now dependent on his friends for even the bare necessities of survival. 
Richard was forced to resign from the Congress as a term of his parole, leaving a hole that was never to be adequately filled by anyone else. And Richard died from lip cancer. Charles Augustus Goodrich writes of Richard Stockton. In his private life, he was easy and graceful in his manners. In his conversation, affable and entertaining and master of a smooth and eloquent style, even in his ordinary discourse. As a man of letters, he possessed a superior genius, highly cultivated by long and assiduous application. At his funeral, Dr. Reverend Samuel Smith said, before your eyes, a most sensible and affecting remains of a man who hath been long among the foremost of his country for power, for wisdom, and for fortune, whose eloquence only wanting a theater like Athens to have rivaled the Greek and the Roman fame. If many great and personal talents could save a man from the grave, we would not find ourselves here lamenting. Behold the end of all perfection. How nice would it be to have that said at your funeral. The end.